Yeah, he sent me a Kickstart ROM that he got on eBay. That's actually a uh, made by the uh, Polanco. Is that how you pronounce it? And it doesn't work. Hello, friends. The guy who sent me the uh, 10 Amiga 1010 drive, of which I failed to fix. Something seriously wrong with that. Also sent me a uh, Plalanto Amiga Forever uh, ROM switcher. Um, and he says it won't switch between the two ROMs. You've seen them. They're all over eBay. Um, just making sure. I mean, there's four pins here, but only two of them have a jumper. But it looks like this is the right one. And it looks like it pulls it down to ground based upon what they've likely had. Uh, they've likely made this a big ground plane. And yeah, flipping the switch to the on position grounds that and also it grounds pin one so and is this a this is missing pins on the end here uh, okay so I guess it goes around this way that's interesting okay I, I have another video about doing your do-it-yourself do ROM switcher, and this one's definitely not quite the same um, because that's actually not pin one. Pin one is up here. Um, you just need to try to get some sort of a concept of how this is wired up. You know, there is another uh, there is another connection to this other pin over here. Uh, R1, R2, 1, 4, A18 and A19. So, that's, that's referring to the address line, uh, I'm sure. It's on the A18 position right now. Is this some sort of thing for uh, for maybe the oops bug or something? Or you gotta be careful when you pull these out um, to try not to bend the pins on the end. This pin is actually bent. See, these are these these are these rounded pins, and uh, boy, they don't they will not stand up to uh, bending. You can bend them once a little bit and bend them back, but that would be it. If you bend them again, they'll break right off. So it looks like the two on the end have been broken off. I'm hoping on purpose. That's kind of the same design as using a 27C800. And that might be what uh, this is. Oh yeah, I feel, I feel the uh, the UV erase window under there. So this is probably a 28C800 one meg chip. Uh, let's see. Let's carefully. Yeah, I'm not sold on using these. Oh my gosh, using these rounded pins in all circumstances. They are wider than normal pins, and uh, they'll spread the legs of a socket farther out. So right now we're ground. We have a ground. We're pulling that lead down. All right, so we're at 3.1 ROM. So what happens when, according to him, if you flip the switch, Yeah, so this is what he said was happening. Now, I wonder if he tried the other position of this. I'm sure he did, but let's just give it a try. So if, the, if that's the case, this should cause something different because I just shorted them. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. So if I, they were open before, so yeah. 
So the two middle pins are grounds, and the outside ones are like a choice between A18 and A19. And that's the only, the only thing it says. So a couple of possibilities. Uh, there's something wrong with this chip uh, as far as the, the PCB. Uh, there's a bad connection or something. You know, in other words, one of the pins is floating instead of being pulled to ground or something like that, or it's being pulled to ground all the time instead of floating or bring, being brought up to 5 volt VCC. Um, but it looks, since there's resistors there, it, it looks like it's, it's it, they're pull-up resistors probably, right? And uh, so if they're pull-up resistors... That's why there's two of them. Yeah, that's why there's two of them on there. One for each. Uh, yeah. And oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. All right. So let's just take a closer look at this. See how close we can get you. Okay. So let's get a pointy device. So we got um, the two middle pins are the grounds, and then we've got these two resistors, and they're hooked together with this lead right here. So yeah, VCC, if I remember, if I do remember correctly, VCC is on the bottom right of the socket. So these are pull-up resistors and that means that somehow on the other side of this board, see, because I don't really see a connection, this is only where it's pulling up and oh and then there's a via right here. So, and a via right there. So this is choosing which pin to pull down was what is what the choices of here are. Which pin are you pulling down when you throw the switch? So pulling either one down. Oh well, you know what I could do is make sure there's no problem with the switch. Uh jeez. Okay. That means I have to put it back in. We're still doing okay with the pins on here, so we're going to get you a better focus here, and we're going to, we're going to reinsert this um, and try to short the pins with something, screwdriver, whatever. Yeah, this, the problem with this is the pins aren't actually that long, they're, you know, there's a little step in the pins that is thicker and it's preventing the thing from seating in there all the way and um, yeah I don't know about that so let's try that shorting these pins <laughs> so what we have here is a switch that either is just bad or has, um, you know, it's bad, it's bad inside the switch or we have a, a wire that's loose or something. Or one of these doesn't make good contact. So it's, it's this, it's the switch or the wire or something. Because we have, um, yeah, and that's the one to short. So what happens when you short the other one out? probably nothing it's probably designed for another yeah it doesn't do anything it's designed for another scenario the oops bug or whatever frankly I don't really care at this point I'm not here to reverse engineer Amiga Forever's equipment let's just pull these pins out of here show you what I'm doing So red to red, good, black to black, so there's nothing wrong with the connectors or the wire, I think the switch is just uh, 
just not doing its thing. Let's see if I can pull. Uh, yeah, so now the switch is working. Um, I don't know if we can get it to fail now. Perhaps give it a yank. Nope, sure feels solid. Maybe the switch was just, uh, yeah. I guess that, that's a pretty good possibility. I have a feeling I'm not going to know what it is. Now that it's working, I'm not going to get it to fail again. So I'm just like, I'm impatient right now and I'm just going to... Uh, It's exactly the way I had it to begin with when it wasn't working. And it's not working. I mean, it is working, so. What does that tell you? Yeah, it's something on this end. It's either the switch or the connection here, so. Of course, it would help if the switch was in the uh, closed position. Because we're trying to get it to load Workbench 3.1 when, when the switch is in the closed position, because it's supposed to give us 1.3. Oh, there we go. It failed. Let's just test here real quick. Yeah, we got nothing. Nothing. Okay, it looks like the positive is having problems. We got nothing. I just wiggled the switch is what I did. Let's see. I can't get it to stay, damn it. Yeah, the switch is bad. Bad switch. Alright, so I guess we know what to do. Put another switch on there. So, use a hobby knife to cut the insulation off. Use a soldering, or, well, actually, it's a bad switch, so we can just clip it off. And then just strip the wires back, tin them solder, uh, put heat shrink on them, and then solder them to a new uh, switch, and uh, yeah. So let's go grab a switch and take care of that. I don't need to show you that on camera. I'll just bring it back when I'm done. All right, so the more intelligent or more detail-oriented of you, uh, or the ones who just used more brain power than I did when I first diagnosed this problem, would, know, uh, would have noticed that this is a, a three-pole switch which means it's on on and so fortunately one of the pins on the end is the one that's bad so that means that you can simply use the one on the other side and the, when the switch is in this position it's off and when the switch is in this position it's, it's shorted so we're just going to test that out so right now is off you know it's the opposite direction because when you slide this this when you slide when you push that to down in this case it's sliding something inside up, and it's making a connection between these two poles on this end. Anyway, can you see that okay? You can use the light. Yeah, that's probably better. So right now, it's technically off because it's shorting the pins on this side, and of course this pin here on this side is the one that's intermittent. So it's technically off right now, which should mean that when I turn the computer on, we should get Workbench 3.1. Yep. Okay, so turn that off. Change the position of the switch to on so that it's grounded. And turning on the computer. And we have 1.3. So yeah. So that's it for this project, this small little repair, quick and easy. Um, I don't blame Cloanto, Amiga Forever, whatever you want to call them. 
necessarily for this. Um, the switch was intermittent, and I never blame anybody. I mean, the switch looks new, and it's just not too surprising to have something once in a while that's intermittent. So, my friend just had uh, the uh, the luck of the draw and getting a bad. The only thing that could have possibly happened where they could have actually kind of ruined the switch is when they went to go solder uh, the pins on there. Well, they're under the heat shrink here. All I had was white in that size. But anyway, um, you know, if you hold the iron on the, on the pole on the leg too long, it, it does melt the plastic. I mean, the, the mounting for everything in here is plastic, and then, like, the framework is metal. So it's possible that if you hold heat on one of these pins too long, it will cause the plastic around it to melt and deform and therefore changing the position of the, this leg because this leg goes right into the body of the switch and probably takes a right turn or something or at least has a termination point where where the contact slides across it and you know if you change the orientation of that because the plastic is deformed from heat then it might not make a good connection or it'll be loose, you know, so it's kind of acting like it's loose. It, uh, of course, it was on this side. It's kind of acting like it was loose, um, but it was difficult to tell because um, it didn't appear loose. So that's one thing that'll make it difficult to diagnose. But it certainly had some sort of issue with connection that was associated with looseness, I believe, because the switch is new, stainless steel, it's not 30 years old. Um, and I sprayed contact spray down there and wiggled it a hundred times or whatever. And so I don't think it's a corrosion or a bad connection. I think this pin over here is just slightly loose. So uh, that's uh, that's the end of this video. Um, we've fixed up our, our friend's Amiga Forever ROM and we're gonna go ahead and send that back to him along with his 1010 drive. All right, friends, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.